Hey guys, I've titled this lesson that we're having today, What is the Beast? Jeffrey Lee Owen, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. So, what is the beast? Let's take a look at this. Revelation chapter 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score, and six. The beast we understand to be Antichrist, the king of hell and death that resides without the indwelt glory of Holy Father God. John, John chapter 8, verse 44, You are your father the devil, and the less of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John ch chapter 17, verse 3, And this is life eternal, the only true God. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So we know that, that life eternal is to know and to be to, to know the, the, the presence and to be cognizant of the goodness of and presence of God in our lives through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And John chapter 8, verse 44 is stating here, when it's stating here, you are your father of heaven, unless your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth. When it says he, he, ab he abode not in the truth, we can understand this to be that when people, people that do not abide in truth are murders. This is what this is saying here. This is hinting, I personally believe, this John chapter 8 verse 44 is hinting at the residence of death within the heart of man through the mark of the beast. And we know the total evacuation of the spirit of grace is the mark of the beast. It's men, it's people that are residing in suspended animation with dead souls that don't even have a passive manifestation of the fruits and the spirit of life within their, their souls. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 and Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 through 3. So people that don't abide in truth are not abiding in, to abide in truth is to abide in the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's to dwell in eternity. That's to know eternal life. But people that that do not abide in truth, the Bible states are murderers. And these are people that are in direct opposition to God. And I believe here in John chapter 8, verses 44, where he says, you are of your father the devil, unless your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth. This is hinting at the residence of death within the heart of man. When it's called saying man is of his father the devil, and because the devil abides not in the truth, it's it's hinting at the evacuation, the, the 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 total evacuation of the spirit of grace within the heart of man, which is the mark of the beast. So this is just when you compare this to John 17, 3, we have a lot of information here because we know we know that to know life eternal, to know that we have life eternal is to is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. But people that don't abide in the truth are, are, are the Bible states, are murderers. And they're, they're abiding in their lusts, and lusts, when it hath conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth, brings forth death. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. And we know the image of the beast is the beginning of death for all flesh. So, let's keep going. The kingdom of the beast. Okay, we have the beast. We understand the beast to be the Antichrist, the appearing of Antichrist into our world. But a king, we know kings reign over kingdoms. Okay, so the kingdom of the beast is described by Holy Father God as Babylonian captivity in Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6, where all lost souls residing in suspended animation take their final seats in the kingdom of hell in a graduating scale as manifested by their works. 1 John 2 18, little children, this is the last time as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Here John is speaking of the spirit of Antichrist, the kingdom of Antichrist, as it was already operational in his time in the first century AD. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, we have the appearance of the ministers of, of 
the the uh, the ministers of Satan that are 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 manifesting fraud and appearing as trying to labor and to appear as ministers of righteousness. Uh, so it's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That means a minister of the gospel. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So here we have, I pers personally believe that this is a reference, this ministration in the second incarnation is a direct reference to the image of the beast as it appears in the second incarnation of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. So Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10 describes for us the first incarnation of the beast that is a kingdom of ideological efforts that grew into a vast body of souls working in concerted efforts that became confused to the true nature and glory of God and began to impose this confusion on the populations by force, even unto death, of those who labored to resist this ideological fraud. The first incarnation of the beast ruled from 538 to 1798, as it was predicted by the prophet Daniel in, in, Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 7 and by the prophet John on the island of Patmos, and as it appears in Revelation chapter 12. So we know the, the first incarnation of the beast was, was from 538 to 1798 AD. The beast is the presence and presence, purpose, and power of Antichrist revealed and concealed, okay? The beast is a civil and an ecclesi it's a union of civil and ecclesiastical power, and it was during the first incarnation of the beast, and it will be so when it comes into the fullness of its power manifested in, in our world today. It'll be, it will be a union of civil and ecclesiastical power that we understand it to be. So the beast is the presence, purpose, and power of Antichrist revealed and concealed in the first and second incarnation of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to, through 10, and Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. Revelation chapter 13, verse through, uh, verses 11 through 18, the second incarnation of the beast, we have the appearing of the image of the beast that labors to supplant justifi justification by faith in Jesus Christ. Christ with its own glory in the body of Christ in contemporary society. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we have, we have in the second incarnation of the beast, we have the image of the beast appear. And the image of the beast is that resides, it does not appear in the first incarnation of the beast's power that, that reigned from 538 to 1798 in sacred scripture, as far as I'm aware. It only, the image of the beast only appears in the second incarnation of the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. The image of the beast is the high priest of Satan, Revelation chapter 9, verse 19 and 18. The image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, Romans 3, 13, 1 John 2, 15 through 18. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, is the last time, as you have heard the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time in 1 Timothy 6.10. So the image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist, soliciting the worship of death as the seal and ambassadorship of Satan resides in its own heart. The image of the beast in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity is the manifest presence of Antichrist in our world. Revelation chapter 17 verse 3. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten hordes. We know the image of the beast is the names of blasphemy that comprises the 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 fullness the 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 fullness of its numbers that makes up the beast in our world. So
when the image of the beast comes to the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as manifested by the government and the constitution of Satan in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, we have the manifest appearing of Antichrist in our world. And that's what Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is. It's a living, animated position. Now, it's a living, animated petition. It is dead souls. These people are dead souls, but they still have thoughts. They don't know Jesus Christ. They're captured in Babylon, and we know Babylonian captivity is men that aren't cognizant of what is true, okay? So the image to the beast, when it comes to the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, is the manifest appearing of Antichrist in our world. And that's why we have the constitution, the operational capacity of the image of the beast appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And then in verse 18, we have the appearing of Antichrist into our world. So the first and second incarnation of the beast has always been an ideological movement that labors as Antichrist in that spirit to supplant the glory of God manifest in the gospel of Jesus Christ into satanic captivity, a.k.a. the mark of the beast, an, ideolo an ideological movement working in concerted efforts to subdue the creature in service to illicit works. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy just and good was then that which is good made death unto me god forbid sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good so we know that the 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 kingdoms of the first and second beast these are spiritual kingdoms luke chapter 17 verse 20 and 21 jesus said in 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 direct opposition to the kingdom of hell and death he said he told his disciples that the kingdom of God comes not with observation, for, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And we know that the mark is is a, the mark of the beast is spiritual. It resides within the soul of man. It does have identification marks in the natural world that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, which I believe is is the worship of the image of the beast on pain of death and summary execution out here in democratic society and the appearance of a religious tax. So it's an appearance. It's the, the union of it's a civil and ecclesiastical union. And So it is. It is definitely. It's. It's. It's a spiritual manifestation. The mark is spiritual. It, it's. It's first and foremost. It's spiritual. It does have natural identification marks that people, as natural men, can discern. But to be in Babylon is to not be cognizant of what is true. So as we go closer and closer to the appearing of Antichrist and the image of the beast gains more and more power to so satanically f fulfill its lusts on pain of death within the population, people become less and less cognizant of what is true and to the fact that they're in they're captive to Babylon. So the the the, the first and second beast are spiritual kingdoms. Okay, that labors for to the for the appearance of their king Antichrist. So the the the, the beast in sacred scripture, while the beast appears as Antichrist and it appears in the, the consummation of 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 hell and death with the flesh of man, it appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. The beast is also kingdoms. It's kingdoms that appear in their first and second incarnation that are groups of people in concerted efforts that labor, and the, the Bible describes this as Babylonian captivity, that labor to subdue the creature and to thwart people uh, to to subdue pe people in satanic captivity and to supplant the glory of Jesus Christ in the second incarnation of the beast for that of the image of the beast of the image of the beast then this 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 satanic work of of the body of Christ supplanting the glory of God through the manifest presence of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ it appears in Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. So the beast is 
Antichrist. The beast is Antichrist, but the Antichrist has a kingdom. And we know that the Antichrist cannot appear in the kingdoms of men until he has first crowned himself. The Antichrist, excuse me, the Antichrist cannot crown himself in the kingdoms of men until he has first seated himself as king in the hearts of all flesh. Because people, if they're not, if they don't have the mark of the beast, they'll recognize what is true. They'll know that death and hell and hatred and satanic occupation is standing in front of them laboring to kill their souls, okay? And that's the purpose of God allowing people to receive the mark of the beast. So they're not cognizant until it's too late. They don't understand what is true. They're abiding in lies. And the Bible says, John chapter 8, verse 44, that if you abide, if you cannot abide in truth, you're a murderer. And that's just the manifestation. This is a hint here in John chapter 8, 44 of the mark of the beast falling upon all flesh. You are your father to devil, unless your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and a bone out of the truth because there's no truth in him. When he, when he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of his own, for, for he is a liar and the father of it. And so we know that the devil does not abide in truth. And the, the Bible, Jesus is telling us here, people that do not, that abide in their own lusts, do not abide in the truth, and they eventually, when sin is finished, it brings forth death, and they're murderers. As, 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 as when it's compared with James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. So, the beast is the appearing of Antichrist in our world, but the beast is also the appearing of the kingdom of Antichrist in our world. And we know that the beast's first attempts to capture the world with the mark of the beast failed. It failed because that was God's divine providence. And I personally believe a big part of it was that the scriptures were not open to the masses. The people were still in the dark ages. That when the Protestant Reformation happened, the Renaissance was happening. People were coming out of, out of just out of moral decay. The Bible, I mean, the, this world went through the dark ages. It was an age of moral and, and, and intellectual and scientific stagnation, decline. People were not able to produce a harvest intellectually in these areas. Um, and I personally believe so because of the fact of the first incarnation of the beast and the terrible, uh, uh, the terrible uh, uh, movement that the beast was and the ideas that it imposed upon the population, drawing people away from the glory of God instead of closer to the glory of God. But in the second car incarnation of the beast, once the Protestant Reformation happened and people started be became enlightened to justification by faith, the Renaissance um, uh, simultaneously happened. And then, in the, and then after the beast was taken captive in 1798, immediately we have the, the first industrial revolution a few years later. So I personally believe that the first incarnation of the beast was what drove the world into the dark ages and people into spiritual and intellectual, scientific, and cultural decay. They've stagnation. People were not able to produce a harvest spiritually and intellectually and in their lives because of the fact that the glory of God was not shining in their hearts in the fullness of its manifestation. But the second incarnation of the beast, we there's no such thing. That's where we have that's where we have the image to the beast first appears in the second incarnation of the beast, and where he the image of the beast as a civil power is laboring in its satanic place to supplant the glory of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ for the worship of itself within the body of Christ as it labors to manifest the constitution of satanic captivity and the government of Satan as it resides within its own heart. And it's explicated in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. So the, the beast power, the beast is Antichrist, but the Antichrist kingdoms appear also as the beast in sacred scripture in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, and Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18, as these ideological movements take took root 
within the hearts of men, men gathered into one mind, one voice, and one singular vision of Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist, and they labored in that manifestation to draw people into eternal condemnation and into the mark of the beast and into the presence of Satan as children of Satan when he appears as Antichrist. Jeffrey Leone, if you're notified about this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to receive, to receive notifications of future installments. Remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Thank you.